The Poem of the Man God, the Second Year of the Public Life, Chapter One Hundred and Forty Four, with the People of Sikar, Twenty Third of April, Nineteen Forty Five. A group of Samaritan dignitaries are coming towards Jesus, led by Forty Nine. God be with you, Rabbi. This woman has told us that you are a prophet. And that you do not disdain speaking to us, we beg you to stay with us and not to refuse to speak to us, because if it is true that we are cut off from Judah, that does not mean that only Judah is holy, and that all the error is in Samaria. Also, amongst us there are some just people. I told her exactly the same. I will not impose myself. Neither will I reject those who seek me. You are just. The woman told us that you are Christ. Is that true? Reply to us in the name of God. I am. The messianic epoch has come. Israel is united by her king, and not only Israel. But you will be the Messiah for those who are not in error. As we are," remarks an imposing elderly man. "Man, I see that you are their leader, and I also see that you are honestly seeking the truth. Now listen to me, since you are learned in the holy scriptures. I was told what the Spirit said to Ezekiel, entrusting him with the prophetic mission. Son of man." I send you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels, who have rebelled against me. They are impudent and stubborn children. They may listen to you, and then not keep your words, which are my words, because they are a rebellious house. But at least they will know that there is a prophet among them. Therefore, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Because they are unbelieving and rebellious, and you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear you. Do what I tell you, hear what I say to you, but not rebellious like them. Eat, therefore, whatever food I give you. And I came. I do not flatter myself, and I do not expect to be received as a triumphant victor. But since the will of God is my honey, here I am to fulfil it. And if you wish, I will tell you the words which the Spirit said to me. How can the Eternal Father have thought of us? Because He is love, my children. Not all the rabbis in Judah say so, but that is what the Messiah of the Lord tells you. It is written that the Messiah is to be born of a virgin in Judah. Of whom and where were you born? In Bethlehem Ephrata, of Mary of the house of David, by means of a spiritual conception, I ask you to believe me. Jesus' beautiful voice is a declaration of triumphant joy, in proclaiming his mother's virginity. Your face is shining with a bright light. No, it is not possible for you to lie. The faces of the children of darkness are gloomy, and their eyes are grim. You are bright. Your eyes. Are as bright as the morning star, and your words are true. Please come to Sikar and teach the children of this people. Then you will go away, and we will remember the star that appeared in our sky. Why would you not follow it? How can we? They are talking while walking towards the town. We are cut off, at least that is what they say. 
but we were born in this faith, and we do not know whether it is right to abandon it. Further, well, I feel I can tell you. After all, we have eyes to see and minds to think. When we pass through your country, on journeys and on business, not everything we see is so holy as to persuade us that God is with you, Judeans, or with you, Galileans. I solemnly tell you that the remainder of Israel will be charged with not persuading and leading you back to God by means of good examples and charity, instead of offending and anathematizing you. How much wisdom there is in you! Have you all heard him? They all nod assent, whispering their admiration. They have in the meantime reached the town, and many people draw near while they walk towards the house. Listen, Rabbi, since you are wise and good, please resolve a doubt of ours. A great deal of our future depends on it. As you are the Messiah, and thus the restorer of David's kingdom, you must be happy to rejoin the severed limb to the body of the state, are you not? I am taking care not so much to reunite the severed parts of what is perishable and transient, as to lead back to God all the souls, and I am happy when I restore the truth to a heart. But express your doubt. Our fathers sinned. Since then, the souls of Samaritans have been disliked by God. What benefit will we receive if we follow good? We will always be like lepers in the eyes of God. Your regret is the eternal dissatisfaction of all schismatics. Once again, I will reply to you with Ezekiel. All souls are mine, says the Lord. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son. Only the soul that sins shall die. If a man is righteous, if he is not an idolater, if he does not fornicate or steal or lend at an interest, if he has mercy both on the body and on the soul of his neighbour, he is righteous in my eyes and shall live a true life. And further on, if a just man has a rebellious son, shall that son live because his father was a just man? He shall not live. And also, if the son of a sinner is a righteous man, will he die like his father because he is his son? No, he shall live eternal life because he was just. It would not be fair if one had to suffer for the iniquity of another. The soul that has sinned shall die. The soul that has not sinned shall not die. And if he who has sinned is repentant and comes to the justice, behold, he shall have true life too. The Lord God, the one and only God, says, I do not want the death of the sinner but I want him to repent and live. That is why he sent me, O wandering children, that you may have true life. I am the life. Who believes in me and in him who sent me will have eternal life, even if up to the present moment he was a sinner. Here we are at my house, master. Do you not detest entering it? I detest only sin. Come in then and stay. We shall break our bread together. And then, if it is not a burden to you, you will explain the word of God to us. That word has a different flavour when it is explained by you. And we are tortured by a doubt. We do not feel sure that we are right. Everything would be appeased if you dared to come openly to the truth. May God speak to your hearts. It is getting dark. Tomorrow, at the third hour, 
I will speak to you at some length, if you wish so. Go now with the mercy which is close to you.